Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. Healthcare workers are injured on the job far more frequently than workers in any other field. Meanwhile, OSHA, the agency tasked with overseeing workplace safety, has not fulfilled its mandate to gather information and protect workplace safety for healthcare workers. This is according to a new report out by the watchdog group Public Citizen titled Healthcare Workers Unprotected, Insufficient Inspections and Standards Leave Safety Risks Unaddressed. We're now joined by two guests to talk more about this report. Keith Wrightson is an expert on worker safety and health issues for Public Citizen's Congress Watch Division. He's performed research for Public Citizen on issues including the Texas Fertilizer Plant Explosion, the Whistleblower Protection Enhancement Act, and workers' injuries and, fat <clears throat> and, workers injuries and fatalities. Thank you for being with us, Keith. We're also joined by Karen Higgins. She's the co-president of National Nurses United. She's the staff nurse in ICU at Boston Medical Center and past president of Massachusetts Nurses Association. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. So Keith, let's start with you. Um, compare the rate of workplace injuries in healthcare versus more regulated injuries and talk about how much these injuries cost the U.S. economy. Well, first of all, I guess we'll start off with saying that the uh, the rate um, in of injuries in the healthcare industry far exceeds uh, the rate of all under all other industries in the United States. Uh, healthcare workers, um, in particular sectors, um, especially nursing home workers, are hurt more on the job uh, than anybody else. Um, an example of that um, would be. Um, in nursing homes that these workers are hurt at a rate of 28.2 times per 10,000 workers. Um, however, the national rate uh, hovers somewhere in the 3.8 range. Um, so it's seven times more likely that if you are working in a nursing home, uh, you're going to be injured on the job than, say, somebody else who's working you know, as a uh, bank teller or uh, in a grocery store or even on a uh, construction site. So uh, the rate far exceeds um, uh, all other industries uh, in the healthcare industry. Now, these injuries come with an enormous cost. Um, and in fact, all injuries and fatalities cost the economy uh, quite a bit of money. Um, one study indicates that back injuries alone, uh, musculoskeletal uh, disorders and injuries, uh, cost the economy roughly $7 billion each year. Uh, that's a huge burden on the economy. Um, and also, uh, you know, the costs get returned back, back to consumers. Um, so in the end, we pay for everybody else's uh, misguided judgment. I wanna bring Karen into the conversation. Karen, can you give us your reaction to this report and what are the most common injuries that healthcare workers face? Well, I think that our um, response is it's a, it's a nice beginning. I mean, I think that um, hopefully, you know, OSHA plays a huge part um, and we've been seeing OSHA kind of be deconstructed versus being more involved in um, workplace than we had in the past. So I think anything that can build OSHA back up and give them the power to be able to get in is, it, to these places where injuries can continue to happen is important. Um, but we still have concerns. I mean, we see um, in nursing alone a huge amount of injuries, and it's mostly uh, muscle, musculoskeletal injuries that we see. Um, we talked about back injuries. It's huge. Um, they did a survey not that many, a couple of years ago, and looked at nurses, and it was something like 82% of the people that answered the survey had back injuries and were working, um, and 52% of them were still working with back injuries. Um, and there was 12% of them that are basically have lost their employment because of back injuries that they could no longer do their job. So it is a huge number. Um, and we truthfully believe that one of the things that we need to um, look is to hold employees to their feet to the fire to do more um, to, you know, for injury prevention. Um, not enough is still being done, I believe, on a part of employees to make sure it's great to build up OSHA, but we have to also hold employees um, responsible for not putting things in place that can prevent these injuries from happening, um, to invest in these to stop people from getting hurt and being uh, put out of work. Now, Keith, I want to read you um, the response 
that uh, David Michaels, the Assistant Secretary of Labor for OSHA, gave to your report. He said, it's unacceptable that workers who have dedicated their lives to caring for our loved ones when they are sick are the very same workers who face the highest risk of work-related injury and illness. Um, Keith, what are the obstacles that prevent OSHA from adequately regulating and inspecting the healthcare industry? It is, is it just their fault or who else is to blame? Uh, there's there's a, there's lots of burdens and barriers in the way of OSHA uh, f to fulfill its mission. Um, there's a special um, uh, attention given to the uh, the agency, um, and their rules and regulations are placed under a microscope far different than any other federal agency, which is pretty ironic. Um, this is a result of what is known as the benzene decision. Um, it was a Supreme Court case uh, that uh, took place in the 1980s. Um, and ever since then, uh, this agency has been scrutinized uh, far worse uh, than any other federal agency. Um, so there's also uh, problems, problems in Congress uh, with the rulemaking uh, process. Um, every time, not every time, but the, on a few occasions, especially over the last five to 10 years, uh, OSHA has tried to create rules and regulations um, to, to help all workers and also uh, healthcare workers. Um, on one occasion, Congress actually repealed the rule um, for ergonomic hazards and um, uh, said that OSHA couldn't do that. Um, that's a huge problem and a burden and a half, um, especially because, you know what, Congress um, isn't as in tune to occupational safety and health as the agency that is put in charge to do so. Um, so there are lots of burdens and lots of hurdles uh, that the agency needs to overcome uh, to get a rule put in place. Uh, Public Citizen ran a report uh, last year, um, and we found that uh, it, on average, takes 8 to 12 years for the agency to promulgate a standard uh, and to get it put into place. And Keith, um, what role do lobbyists play in Congress's um, inaction um, in, in, in overseeing what's happening um, in the healthcare field? Um, we can't say for certain because we do not have all the records. Um, it's very hard to find out where the lobbyists are spending their money. However, you can do uh, some, some investigatory work on your own. Um, and I suspect that lobbyists play a huge role um, in any rules uh, coming into the healthcare industry. Um, and that's very problematic. Uh, the democracy here is supposed to be for the people and by the people. It's not supposed to be for the people with the biggest checkbook. Um, Congress really needs to consider uh, the lives of workers. We're the greatest asset uh, to the industry. And it's troubling that money can buy you anything in this city. And Karen, um, since the financial crisis, uh, across the country on a federal, state, and local level. Budgets have been cut. Um, talk about how this has affected healthcare worker safety. Well, it's huge. I mean, obviously, to most um, you know, industries, the bottom line is um, making money, making profit. And so um, as they feel more of a squeeze, and what goes on is we lose more workers which means that those that are still remaining are now doing twice or sometimes three, four, five times what they were doing before. And when you're in a healthcare environment, and it's a lot, as we know, um, mobilizing a patient, um, it becomes a huge problem. Um, you know, some we see some investment in equipment, but the problem is if the equipment is really not, you know, the cheaper version of the equipment is not what is really helpful to somebody to help move people, then the equipment that you just invested in doesn't get used, and it's a huge problem. And we as an organization have been very much up front, um, you know, working on, um, you know, workplace violence and also uh, patient handling, which is a huge issue with us because, again, we see so many injuries, not just back, but all different kinds of muscle skeletal injuries. Um, so it, it's something we have worked on at the state level, uh, at the federal level, trying to, because again, I think, you know, we need to empower OSHA to be able to do more. We need to hold the employees responsible when they're not doing what they should be doing to prevent injuries. Um, but we need to legislatively, and we need to put regulations in effect, that in fact, 
set that up, that there is obviously, um, if you're not following the law, or if you set up a law that, you know, we want to set, an example would be for patient safety, for, um, you know, mobilizing patients is to be able to say, um, you know, is, is it unsafe to move that patient in, or an assignment that looks like it's unsafe? Um, can you refuse to take it um, and not be um, basically disciplined or fired because of it? Um, how are we doing with teaching and education when we have equipment or other ways to move people? Are we really invested in doing that? Um, where are we with whistle, whistleblower language when it comes to people actually speaking out when things are not safe within a work environment? But there also has to be that net that allows that if they're not doing it, what is the what is the outcome? And it has to be something um, that is tangible and really, um, you know, holds these employees, um, you know, hold their feet to the fire that they do the right thing on behalf of the workers and keep them as safe as possible. Um, and it shouldn't be, you know, again, we have an agency that's supposed to be there, but they've been, I think, pretty much, um, you know, pushed back as, as, you know, Keith was saying, from being able to be effective and able to um, keep these employees um, responsible for making sure that not only do we react to injuries, but that we actually prevent injuries from occurring, which is huge. And Karen, what impact does uh, healthcare workers being sick have on the patients they are serving? Um, it's a huge impact because, again, um, where profit becomes more important than actual patient care, uh, what happens is that there is no, you know, when you lose uh, somebody that's a, you know, a worker, um, there isn't anybody there to step in and replace them. So it has a huge outcome on patient care because, you know, the less there are of workers, the less that we're able to do on behalf of patients, which is um, very um, discouraging and it's very upsetting to most of us that you know our whole focus is patient care and being able to deliver the kind of care patients deserve um, and when you don't have the resources to be able to do that whether it's because there's not enough nurses there's not enough other people there as far as um, help to be able to um, you know whether it's mobilize patients and, and make sure this you know just because of skin issues um, getting them out of bed things like this is huge um, so it, it ultimately really has a huge effect on patient care um, so you know and again it, it, it all trickles down and in the end we don't want patients paying for the fact that um, you know they're not getting the care that they deserve or that they're um, actually developing sores and things like that because we don't have either the right equipment or um, you know things put into place to be able to help us mobilize patients easier or take care of patients easier um, and again when people are out they're not replaced um, it's not that easy to have somebody come in um, and be able to just pick up and, and you know, take over where somebody else uh, has an expertise in a field and is now gone. And Keith, we'll end with you. Um, you've just completed this exhaustive study. Um, what are the next steps that need to be uh, put into place, uh, steps that need to, need to happen to address these issues? What are you, what are you calling for today? Um, we're calling for a few things. Uh, it's definitely a multifaceted approach. Uh, first of all, Congress starts to need to pay attention to the burden of uh, injuries and illnesses, not only in healthcare but in all of industry. Uh, so that's that's important. Uh, we would like to see the agency uh, that is OSHA um, include hospitals in their national emphasis program. Uh, currently, it only targets nursing care facilities, so nursing homes. Uh, we would like Congress to increase funding uh, for the agency so no other workers are de denied their rights under the OSH Act, which entitles them to a safe and happy uh, workplace. We would like rulemaking to commence on safe patient handling. Uh, we believe that the 10 states that currently have these laws in place have provided an excellent pilot for their effectiveness, and we think that the federal agency should move forward immediately on safe patient handling. Uh, we also feel the same way about workplace violence. Uh, a standard should be created uh, or promulgated uh, for, for that area. And also, the Bloodborne Pathogens Act, given its outstanding success, should be expanded. Uh, the, uh, the rule is currently under regulatory review, um, and we are expecting um, an expansion of that uh, labor standard in the near future. Um, so we would love to see that happen. We want to thank you both for joining us. 
Uh, Keith Wrightson is with Public Citizen. Karen Higgins is co-president of National Nurses United. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.